Hello everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and uh, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Every Monday we're live right here on YouTube talking with you about Royal Caribbean and when we're not live on YouTube, we're hanging out at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice. People just drop in here all the time. And so can you as well as we hang out here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lisa and Rostin is our first chatter is in. Welcome, guys. Happy Monday. I know it's not usually the people get excited for Monday, but it means two things. One, we're both now one week closer to our next cruise, and it also means we get to talk with you guys live here on YouTube because every Monday, we're live right over here. Mona Boz, first live chat. Mona, glad to have you here. And we have a tradition in our live broadcast where we're going to get a lot of questions, but there is one question that is by far the most important question, which is how many days until your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Type your countdown in chat, guys. Let's count down together because I am at 55 days to my next Royal Caribbean cruise on Oasis of the Seas Going on a waste for Thanksgiving. Can't wait. Super excited for that. First new, uh, first sailing back for Oasis of the Seas after her refurbishment. Going to be amazing. Going to try to see it all, do it all, and share it all with you guys over here because that's what it's all about. Uh, let's hear Tina, the cruising librarian. Great name. Seven days till her next cruise. Uh, Teresa, four months till her next cruise. Anita Crosby at 144. And Anita, happy birthday, I believe. Uh, Annette's got 13 days. Ron Ladowski, 208 days till his next cruise. Uh, Carl, 155. Sh Sandy Paul, trying to decide the best month to go Western Caribbean for the Commas Sea. Sandy, you can't predict calm seas. It's like saying, uh, you know, let's make plans and figure out what day it won't rain at home. You have about as much luck as predicting that as you do when it comes to calm seas. And I know somebody out there is thinking, oh, why don't you tell her, Matt, to not book during hurricane season? And the idea that rough seas only exist during hurricane season and calm seas are the rest of the year is totally inaccurate it's not a it's not a fair characterization in either case <clears throat> so my advice is don't worry about it you have no control of the weather nobody can predict the weather accurately pick the time that works for you and uh go on for a cruise then don't don't try to try to predict the weather is also trying to predict you know you might as well start figuring out what the winning lottery numbers are uh, Richard Joseph, 27 days till Harmony of the Seas. Nice. Claire, next cruise in June. Kind of close. It is. Hey, look, when you're under a year from your next cruise, it's it's around the corner, so to speak. <clears throat> Abby, 272. Can't wait. Karen Ellie, four days. My sister just passed this morning. I'm sorry to hear that, Karen. Um, but hopefully the cruise will help a little bit with that. MJ, 123 till Rhapsody of the Seas. Mrs. Johnson just got off Navigator of the Seas. Mrs. Johnson, what was your favorite thing? about Navigator of the Seas. Uh, Joe, Joe Husowski, was that right? On Symphony right now. Where are you on Symphony right now, Joe? <clears throat> Cruising Q, 75 days to Explorer of the Seas. Love it. Um, Abby, 272. Melinda, this will be your first Royal Caribbean cruise. Melinda, which ship are you going on? Uh, let's see here. Lisa, 28 days to your first Star Class experience on Ovation. Star Class, of course, the elite top uh, suite class over there. Daniel Trevino wants to know, what is my favorite cabin besides a suite? Oh, you know, I don't, I'm fairly agnostic towards cabins. I don't have like one particular category or class of cabins I always book. I think inevitably we probably look at balconies as a good starting point. Balcony rooms offer a, a, a fair amount of space actually, um, you know, and, and it gives us the kind of, you know, not only, and of course the private balcony area is really nice. That's what we usually go for, but I'll be honest, I'll book whatever gets me on the ship. I don't really, I'm not the kind of person who's, I only say in this week category or, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's guy first cruise, no kitties. You'll love that as well. Uh, Mona, jet ski in Nassau or Coco Key? Nassau. Coco Key, you want to enjoy what's on the island. Nassau, you can do things obviously in and around Nassau. Uh, Roz, why be on Anthem in January? I will not be on Anthem in January. I wish I was. And right now in January, I'm going on Brilliance of the Seas. Uh, Joseph McMenemy, 54 days till Harmony for Thanksgiving. Tim Black says, do solar rooms really exist? And hello, I can't find a solar room in the Caribbean or in Royal Caribbean. Yes, they do exist. There are very few of them, Tim. And to be perfectly honest with, this, with you, solar rooms go extremely fast. We have a list of all the ships that have solar rooms and how many there are over at royalcrainblog.com. Solar rooms are 
staterooms designed for a single traveler. The thing is, Tim, the reason why you probably can't find any is they go very quickly, so you have to book them like, you know, over a year in advance easily. And there's very few on the ship to begin with. So, uh, you know, I understand as a solo traveler, you don't want to pay that single supplement fee. But I can also tell you there are still deals that are out there, good prices, even if you do pay that single supplement fee, you just have to, again, look for those little uh, great rates that are out there. So, uh, Denden, what are the best containers for someone who enjoys the ship much more than the actual ports? That is an excellent question, dude. I would definitely tell you a Caribbean sailing. Uh, you want one that has a lot of sea days, uh, maybe even a repositioning cruise. A transatlantic is a really good one as well. But also Caribbean uh, itineraries in which you're going to ports that are lovely and nice to go to, but not as culturally, historically, or socially significant like you get in Europe, as an example, or Alaska, where the destination where you're visiting is really important. But if you just want to enjoy what the ship has to offer, I mean, certainly a transatlantic a repositioning cruise like that, we have a lot of sea days is where you want to go. But if that's not really in the cards, a good old Eastern or Western uh, Caribbean is, is not bad. Uh, Tony, what recommendations do you have for Grand Cayman? Grand Cayman, Seven Mile Beach. Uh, don't book anything in advance. Get off the ship. Go to a taxi and say, I'd like to go to Seven Mile Beach and tell them what amenities you're looking for. Seven Mile Beach is not like one beach. It's just a giant seven mile long beach. And there's a lot of different places that have uh, businesses set up on the beach that have restaurants, bar service. Some even, if you just want to hang out on the beach, have nothing, you can do that as well. So let them know what you're looking to do there. Like, you know, say, hey, as an example, if I were to do it, I'd be, I'd go down and grab a taxi, you know, you get off that tender ride, grab a taxi in Grand Cayman and say, hey, I'd like to go to Seven Mile Beach. And can you recommend a, a place that has drink service, umbrellas, uh, chairs, and, and some good service for me? For me and my family. And that's what I would do personally. Uh, Matt, am I going to make a video on Voyager's new refurb? Uh, that's a good question, dude. I'd like to. I'm kind of at the mercy of what Royal Caribbean has to offer in terms of <coughs> info on Actually, Voyager of the Seas is undergoing her refurbishment right now. Of course, we do have the details at royalcaribbeanblog.com. But the other side of the coin, Matt, was the reason why I didn't do a video beforehand was because it wasn't that, in the grand scheme of amplifications, it wasn't that exciting. Uh, Jason, there's still time to get to Epcot for the final illuminations. Boring for me. I don't <laughs> Not my thing. I've been there, done that a million times. Goodbye, eliminations. Uh, Mona, best excursion in Nassau. There's so many great things to do in Nassau. I mean, you can go to Atlantis, spend the day over there at the beach, uh, in the water park, at the casino. Lots of things going on over there. You have British Colonial Hilton if you want to save a little bit more money, but still want to have a great beach and pool day. You've got Jetline Simulations offering a Boeing 737 flight simulator uh, experience. Uh, that's just really scratching the surface of what there is to do there. Uh, Dummy Face Saga, how far away by taxi is Megan's Bay in St. Thomas? It is in St. Thomas, you're right. Um, without traffic, it's probably about half an hour-ish. Melinda, what is there to do in Costa Maya? Costa Maya is all, Costa Maya is all about the beach. Uh, or I would say there are two things really doing Costa Maya. Beach or Mayan ruins. You pick one of the two over there. Uh, Anna Renee, best thing to do in Cozumel. Man, Cozumel has probably the most going on. Uh, Anna, we do have a video here on our YouTube channel where I go through everything you need to, you need to know about Cozumel. I defer you to that video because you're going to get a much better answer than I'm going to give you here in about 10 seconds. But um, the bottom line is I think a lot of people end up at a beach. An all-inclusive resort is really popular in Cozumel, whether that is Nachi Cocum, whether that is El Cosmolino, whether that is Mr. Sancho's Paradise Beach. These are all fantastic establishments. We have reviews of every single one over at royalcreamblog.com. Zachary Steinberg, any news on Odyssey? Not more than we've had in the last, what was it, two weeks ago or whatever, when Royal Caribbean released their first sailings and announced it was going to sail from Port Canaveral, or uh, sorry, Port Everglades. And, uh, you know, this is beyond that. No, no, nothing since then. Desiree, is it worth getting off the ship in San Juan? Absolutely. San Juan, Puerto Rico is a beautiful city. Tons to do, great dining, ter uh, tremendous amount of culture. Uh, you definitely want to get off the ship, absolutely. Uh, Katie Murphy, can we use onboard credit to upgrade the cabin? No. Uh, Buko fan, where can we book the iFly and North Star on Anthem of the Seas? It'd be in the Cruise Planner website. So if you're not seeing it yet, that may mean you're too far away to book it. Keep checking back. Tiffany, Harmony versus Voyager? I mean, Harmony's going to cost you a lot more, but it's going to offer you a lot more. So... Uh, Brad, watched a lot of your videos. Truly appreciate all the information. It's been eight years since your last cruise. Well, Brad, I'm glad you're here. Glad you got another cruise book, dude. You got to go cruising a little more often than once a decade. 
Sophie, have you been on Majesty? She is your favorite ship. I absolutely love Majesty. It's a great ship. Been on her, uh, went for, um, went on, um, uh, Majesty to go to Cuba a couple of years ago. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, Matthew Kreiser, do you ever upgrade your stateroom on embarkation day if they offer you a deal? What's a good deal for you? The answer is no, Matthew, because the opportunity to upgrade on embarkation day is almost non-existent. I mean, rooms rooms are all full. I mean, it's very rare for there to be available rooms. And I, it, so often, Matthew, I have gone to the either guest relations desk on board the ship or to the peer coordinator, and I just see the sign that says no upgrades available. I've just stopped, I've just stopped going, dude, because in my opinion, it's, I'm wasting my time. Uh, Mona, is Freeport worth getting off the ship? Well, right now, Freeport is non-operational. Uh, as an example, I had a, sh a cruise book to, that was supposed to visit Freeport about a week or so ago, and that visit was canceled. In general, I am an advocate of getting off the ship in every port you visit. Regardless if you've been there or not, I think it's kind of cool to do it. It's part of what makes a cruise fun. Even if you just get off the ship, have a beer or a drink and pour to, you know, something to eat and hop back on board, that's fine too. You don't have to go crazy and have like the most amazing epic adventure known to man. You can kind of play it easy, but you should get off the ship. I think it's worth it. Uh, Chris, how is the Wi-Fi on board? The Wi-Fi speeds do vary from ship to ship in Royal Caribbean, but in general, it's pretty darn good. Uh, especially if you're on the Oasis class ships or the Quantum class ships, you're going to have really good Wi-Fi. Uh, Katie, what can I use my onboard credit for? You can use your onboard credit for any purchase on board the ship. So if you buy a souvenir, if you go uh, to a specialty restaurant, if you buy an alcoholic beverage or any beverage on board uh, that's not included with your cruise fare, basically anything that you use your C Pass card to swipe for, to pay for, your onboard credit works towards that. So, um, Andrew says, does the Lurus propulsion prompt prohibit the use of stabilizers as much? No, it has nothing to do with it, Andrew. The stabilizers are in the front of the ship. They're kind of like little, imagine little wings, like almost like airplane wings for the ship that's underwater. The issue is with the one of the engines in the back. Uh, Sophie Burns, what's my least favorite ship? Honestly, I don't have one. I mean, I there is not one ship in Royal Caribbean's fleet I don't recommend going on. I, that I, I love them. I think they do a great job. I think that really what it boils down to, Sophie, is a matter of what are you looking for in a ship? As an example, if you were to tell me, you know what, I really want a ship that has water slides. Well, all right, you should not be going on a Radiance class ship or Majesty of the Seas or Empress of the Seas or a Vision class ship because they don't have water slides. I know Radiance ships have a little kitty slide, but we're going to forget that for a second. Uh, you know what I mean? It's a matter of finding what works for you and finding the right ship. So there isn't one ship in there I say, guys, don't book this ship. Not far from it. They're all really great. It's a matter really of what you're looking for there. Uh, what happens if you don't use all your onboard credit? You lose it. Use it or lose it. Uh, MML, cheapest cruise on Royal Caribbean? Well, it really depends. It's it's. I get this question a lot. There isn't, like, <laughs> cruise fares like airline fares. You know, like, you ever buck an airline ticket? And, you know, what's the cheapest airline ticket? Well, there really isn't one. It's a matter of a lot of factors. When you book, where you're going, um, you know, time of year, how far out you book it. These kind of factors also apply to cruise fare. So you can get some really last minute deals. But again, is your question, is the lowest price like total price or is it per night? Because you do some of these, you know, 14 night cruises, like a transatlantic cruise, right? The price per night is probably cheaper than a three night cruise. But a three night cruise is going to cost you less overall. So there's a lot of considerations as well. Diane, welcome. <laughs> Hello. 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 I am from the Pirates of Caribbean. What? <laughs> All right. Good night. You are my favorite. <laughs> um, shimmers. Daniel, will Thrill Water Park close if there's just rain or if there's lightning? Uh, for lightning you only. My <laughs> anyway, um, they will. Cr the, so they'll shut it down if there is a lightning. Rain, no problem. I've, and I've been there for both. Um, obviously, for safety reasons, they will shut things down if there is lightning. And as soon as the lightning passes, it's back on again. So, uh, Cece, what would you recommend doing in Falmouth? I would definitely recommend an excursion. It's not an excursion to, to wing it. The, my best recommendation, I haven't been there in years, but uh, the one I give out as a recommendation to do in Falmouth is the Hilton Rose Hall. You can usually book that on your own. Lisa, is it true that there's a white party or a white... A white night or a white party during the cruise. Yeah, there's usually a cruise where you wear like something like this, a white, you know, you wear white clothing and there's like glow sticks, things like that on some ships. Uh, and then, of course, then you're trying to figure out, was it on my ship? 
The only way to really know is to look at a past cruise compass. This is the daily newspaper Royal Caribbean distributes on its ships. We keep an archive of them at royalcaribbeanblog.com. And the reason why I'm telling you to look at a past cruise compass is because Royal Caribbean doesn't divulge that information in advance. Uh, what are my kids' favorite ships? I think they generally love the Oasis class. They just love an overwhelming amount of things to do on board. Uh, you know, activities, activities, activities. Things to do. Uh, Mona, Champion of the Seas, thoughts? It's a great ship. What's the best beach club in Cozumel, Bob? If you're looking for all-inclusive, my top two picks are Nachi Kokum and El Cosmolino. If you're looking for pay-as-you-go, low price to get in, then Paradise Beach. Uh, Jenny from the block loves the Oasis class, too. It's hard to go wrong with the Oasis class in general. Whether you're talking about my kids, whether you're talking about parents, baby boomers, uh, teens, seniors. There's just a lot going on there. It's hard to go wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, Sonoma Johnson just finished Symphony of the Seas. We want to get back on it. How do we get a good deal for the next time around? Yes, I like where you're going with this one. Number one, book as early as you can. The sooner you book, the better. You know, if you can book at 12, 18, uh, 24 months ahead of time, do so. Number two, use a travel agent. A travel agent will really help you in getting the best possible deal out there. Anna got in Best Beach in Nassau. If you just want the best beach, you want the greatest Instagram photo, Cabbage Beach. There's no facilities there, so keep that in mind. Uh, what do you use to wipe down your room? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Andy. Do you mean like like wipes or something? Sophie Burns, what's the best time to go to the basketball court when no one's there? Morning. Almost always the morning is a good time for that one. Uh, Keith wants to know, is it true the ultimate dining package includes Playmakers and Johnny Rockets? Yes. Uh, Devan Top, what's my favorite St. Kitts and St. Thomas excursions? St. Thomas, go to Megan's Bay. St. Kitts? You know, going to the beach is a great idea as well, but they have a, something that was a lot of fun that we did the last time we were in St. Kitts, which is to take a train tour. Uh, Royal Caribbean offers a train tour of the countryside of St. Kitts. kind of different and new. So check that out. We have a review of the train tour in St. Kitts at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Uh, JC, any thoughts on the Central Park interior review cabins we have booked on Oasis next year? I love them, JC. Uh, by the way, JC, another apology for accidentally timing you out the last live broadcast. I love the Central Park balconies. I think Central Park balconies are... Uh, I love the ambiance of them. I love the fact they're a little bit cheaper than Ocean View balconies. Uh, so I try... I see them almost all the time. Uh, Landland, do you have any recommendations for first-time cruisers? Yeah, we have a lot of videos here in our channel. If you haven't seen it yet, check those out because I think it'll really help you out there. But a couple things. Book your cruise as early as you can. Don't fly in the same day of your cruise. Uh, use a travel agent. Um, when you're arriving in... The, do the online check-in. When you're arriving to the terminal on your cruise day, make sure you uh, get there earlier in the morning. I would say around 11 a.m. or so. Again, land, land. There's a lot of great stuff. In fact, I'm going to recommend also check out royalcaribbeanblog.com. In the main menu, there's a link that says Getting Started. Click that link, Land Land, because that Getting Started link is exactly for someone like yourself who you, you want to learn everything, but you don't know what you what you need to know, right? It's a good jumping off point right there. Glamp, thoughts on the White Pass train excursion in Alaska? I have not done it yet, Glamp. I think I'm going to do it when I go back to Alaska next year, but I've heard amazing things about it. Uh, Mona, the park, Mona wants to know how much is cruise parking. It really depends on the port. Every port has a different rate. But they're usually not too bad. I always park at the port. I never park off-site. Uh, Dan, what is not to miss in Bermuda? No question about it. You want to go to Horseshoe Bay. Um, Mickey, I found out when I got... Oh, hold on a second. I found out when I got home from a cruise that my boyfriend bought me a 500 cruise cash. Can I use it on another cruise? It's not credit. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, Mickey. But here's the bottom line. Um... When, when it comes to whatever you're talking about. Number one, if you book with the travel agent, call your travel agent. Let them sort it out. If you booked with the Royal Caribbean, call Royal Caribbean. I mean, I'm not sure if they what your boyfriend purchased exactly. My advice, by the way, just this is not going to help Mickey out, but it's going to help other folks out. If you want to gift somebody onboard credit or money towards their cruise, unfortunately, there's not a very good way for it. And my recommendation is just give them a cash, give them a check, do something like that. Michael Garner with a super chat. Thank you, Michael. Michael writes, what should I expect on Liberty during spring break? A fantastic cruise, Michael. Um, spring break is, the fact that spring break is is almost irrelevant. And I say that, Michael, because a lot of spring breakers go on the shorter sailings. Liberty to seven-nighters, I don't think it'll it'll really matter to you, quite frankly. So I think you'll have a great time. So you should expect an amazing cruise. Obviously, you might see some more families there than, say, I don't know, the middle of January. 
but that's probably not much of a surprise. I mean, Royal Caribbean is a family cruise line. You're going to get a healthy mix of guests from of all ages, really. By the way, love the questions, guys. Keep them coming. Uh, Carlos, cruising on October 26th, what to do on Adventure of the Seas? You know, check out the water slides, <coughs> excuse me, on Adventure of the Seas. Um, when you're doing Sail Away, go down to the helipad, check that out. And also be sure to have a bite to eat at Izumi. It is the, uh, spe the, the Japanese specialty restaurant on the Royal Promenade, the only ship in the fleet that has an Iz Izumi on the Royal Promenade. Uh, Buko fan, what is the coldest temperature from the Flow Rider will run at leaving in New November from New Jersey? That's a good question. I don't know, actually. Um, what If there is a lowest temperature, I mean, you know, obviously if it's too cold, they may not run it at all, but I don't know what that threshold is, actually. Uh, Draj wants to know, should I book an Eastern or Western Caribbean cruise? Eh, flip a coin. I, I mean, you can make an argument for both ones. That doesn't really matter. Danielle OG in the house. I haven't been inside my room just yet. It still says guarantee, but it does say I'm on deck 10. How certain should I be so I have a room on deck 10? I'm not sure where you're saying that, Danielle, but fear not. You will get a room assignment. Not to worry. Just keep checking back. Um, it, it, there, it's kind of a game, if you will, as to when a guarantee room gets assigned. I'm not sure that I... I can't recall ever seeing like a deck but not a room number. Um, I mean, the only thing I would trust... Let me put it this way, Danielle. Uh, I'm not sure how you booked it or who you booked it through, but you should go to Royal Caribbean's website, go to the cruise, uh, log into your account, and that's the only place you should look to see what your room assignment is. What's the best repositioning cruise? The one you're on. I mean, Transatlantics, Transpacifics. Uh, you've got ones that go all over the world, quite frankly. Um, they're all really good. It's really a matter of what works for you. Unicorn Life with the super chat. Thank you, Unicorn Life. And Unicorn Life writes, do you have to get to the bar to get a drink or can you get one from your lounger? Good question. The answer is both. Yes, you can get one from your lounger. Uh, if you're on the pool deck, that is. There are roaming waiters. Obviously, it might be a little slower to get one for you, but they absolutely do walk around and you can get your drinks that way as well. So that way you never have to get up if you're reading your book, sun tanning, taking a nap, whatever the case may be. No, there's definitely waiters around on the pool deck to get it. Now, it's right around the pool deck. If you have a chair like elsewhere on the ship, like on the promenade deck, which is on deck four or five on most ships, the answer is no. Then you have to get up to get it. But by the pool deck, no worries about that. Uh, World Builder, what's a good cruise for young kids? Oasis or Quantum Class ships? You know, so Oasis, Harmony, Allure, Symphony, uh, Anthem of the Seas, Ovation of the Seas. Great choices. Uh, Nick A, must do on Navigator. You have to try the two water slides they have on there. Riptide and Blaster is the only ship in the fleet that offers these type of slides. One is a tube water coaster slide, and the other is a headfirst mat slide. Really, uh, really, really nice. CCK, thank you for the super chat. Guys, you're very, very uh, uh, generous this evening. Thank you very much for the super chat. Diane says, uh, is the ultimate dining plan too much food? Not too much, but it is a lot. I mean, you're not going to go home hungry. I, I promise you that, Diane. But it's not too much. It's nice. It's a, you know, it's, it's a nice way to splurge a little bit, but bring your stretchy pants. It's probably a good idea. Uh, Sophie, what are the Crown and Anchor Society status of my kids? They're the same level as us. Because they're 18, under 18, and live in the same household, they have our status. So they're Diamond Plus. Uh, Derek, if, you ever, if you're in a junior suite, is the key worth it? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, you're going to get priority embarkation with the, with being in a junior suite. I'd probably say skip it. Save the money. Spend it elsewhere. Michael Vitale, thank you so much, my friend. Really appreciate that. Happy New Year. Well, I know you're not celebrating it, but Happy New Year back to you. <laughs> uh, MC Far, how many crews have I been on, brother? I have been on probably around 40 or so, I think. Royal Caribbean these days. Uh, does the Adventure of the Seas have a comedy club? It doesn't have a dedicated comedy club, Carlos, but there is comedy performed uh, on board the ship on select nights. Yes. Uh, Dolly, do you see Royal Caribbean going to any new islands in the future? Hmm, let me think about that. I'm trying to think of a specific example. I hate to say no. I mean, they're always looking at new ideas, always new options. One thing that Royal Caribbean has proven is they're always looking for something different, something new to offer its guests. Um, so I can, the answer is, I think, I don't think the specific I can give you off the top of my head, but I think it's going to happen. Mickey with a super chat, who writes, any perks to back-to-back? -to -back? Yes, there is a fantastic perk to a back-to-back -back cruise. You don't have to go to work <laughs> or home. Um, no, there's not, like, you don't get specific incentives or benefits for booking consecutive cruises, you know, one cruise right after another. Uh, but you do get the satisfaction of waving goodbye to everybody as you get to stay on board the ship. It is a lot of fun to do that. So, 
Uh, Michael, that project in Freeport can be considered new. That's a good point, Michael Vitale. So Michael Vitale is talking about not the fact that Royal Caribbean is visiting Freeport for the first time. That's not new. But Royal Caribbean is actively developing a new port um, facility, if you will, for Freeport. This is a couple of years away, so don't like hold your breath for this one. We're talking at least 2021. But uh, they are working on kind of something similar in some respects to like what we see in Falmouth. Or um, or even like St. Kitts, we have like this like giant port facility, that kind of a little enclosed area. That's kind of what they're working on in Freeport. Uh, Sophie, what's the best place to sit for the Aqua Theater? Uh, you want to skip the first two or three rows because you can get splashed over there, and then as close to center as you possibly can. Uh, Bobby Smedley, first December cruise this year, allure of the seas to Mexico. How is the water temperature in the pools and ocean? Uh, to borrow a phrase, caliente, not muy caliente. But warm. It's going to be warm for you. You're going to enjoy swimming. It's going to be swimming weather. You'll you'll love it. Uh, Lisa and Rostan, what do you think will be the next breakthrough from Royal Caribbean? Oh, man. You want me to put my thinking cap on? I honestly... I mean, the Icon class, which is the next new class of ships that come out in a couple of years, that is going to, I think, uh, inaugurate a new era of cruising, both efficient... Um, as well as on board. I, I really think this is going to be an opportunity for Royal Caribbean to truly push the envelope. Uh, Katie Murphy writes, without having an internet package, how my family get a hold of me in case of an emergency? Well, like if it's an emergency, they'll page you. If someone wants to go to the Windjammer and they told you to meet you somewhere else, that's not an emergency. Uh, I mean, if you don't have the internet, you know, there's a couple of options available to you. You can do the old school way. Leave, state, leave voicemail messages on your stateroom phone. You can use a whiteboard. You can buy that at a dollar store, put that on your outside your room. They can leave little messages there. Um, you can use uh, actually your phone. If you do it right, and I say if you do it right, you can disable you know data roaming on your phone, connect and to the to the cell phone tower, and then text each other. Texting is actually not very expensive uh, when even when you're roaming. The problem is you run the risk of accidentally having your phone uh, be able to use data, and again you disable. Rome, the international roaming, you're fine, but easier said than done in a lot of cases. Vicky, what deck is the helipad on Adventure of the Seas? Deck four. Walk all the way forward. You walk outside, walk all the way forward, you will literally run into it. Sport Crazy, going on Odyssey of the Seas. Uh, any suggestions for Aruba, Palm Beach, or Eagle Beach? You want to go there. Great, great spot. Uh, George Robertson, what's the best things to do on Independence of the Seas? Uh, you got the sky pad. You've got uh, Zumi on there. Hibachi, fantastic. Got to check that out. Um, you know, lots of great things to do on Independence of the Seas. Uh, Eric Thomas, the day in Nassau since the ship leaves at 9 p.m. Is it better to eat dinner on the island or on the ship? 9 p.m. I've, I've done both. Um, the problem is right around the port, right around Nassau, there's really not. By 5 o'clock, everything shuts down. So regardless of the fact your ship is staying late, doesn't mean you're going to have a lot of dining options coming your way. I have to sneeze, guys. I apologize. <coughs> Sorry. So if you want to eat on the island, which I've done, you need to take like a taxi to like one of the resort areas like over by Baja Mar or in Atlantis. And certainly, hey, that's really nice to be able to do. A lot of fun. Um, you just have to keep in mind there's be a little more creativity required on your end, if that makes sense. Uh, thank you, Anthea. Please. Uh, Ron Lowski, shameless plug, I am a proud insider. What is an insider? Thank you, Ron Ladowski, for that. A Royal Caribbean blog insider, somebody who supports royalcaribbeanblog.com by making a donation. Actually, it's kind of like PBS. You know, you can make a monthly donation. That's kind of how it works here. And by becoming a Royal Caribbean blog insider, you can actually donate to the blog and help keep the blog running and get some really nice benefits for yourself as well. If you're already an insider, type insider right now in chat so I can say thank you. And if you're not one, you can become one for as little as $1 a month by going to royalcaribbeanblog.com slash support. Pascal Smith, thank you for being an insider. Kathy Drew, thank you for being an insider. Favorite things on Liberty of the Seas, be Nikes. Uh, definitely the tidal wave water slide. Only ship in the fleet that has it. Mike Pastori, thank you for being an insider. 12th man, thank you for being an insider as well. Uh, Roch Rochio? Rochio? Rocio? If you do flexible dining, my time dining, how long are the typical wait times to be seated? It really depends, quite frankly, on when you go. If you go during a prime time, like say 6 p.m. till about 7.30 or 8, you're gonna run into longer lines than if you eat before or after that. But the key is have a reservation, you'll have a lot less to lines in there. 
Uh, Robert Osler, thank you for being an insider. Julie Hall, thank you for being an insider. Squeeze, thank you for being an insider as well. Um, Sean and KC, welcome. Glad to have you here. Don, thank you for being an insider. Gary Richard, thank you for being an insider. Angela Roman, thank you for being an insider as well. Uh, Mustang says, uh, what type of room would you suggest for someone who, need, who needs a walker looking cruise out of Florida? As long as you don't need, like, a, like you don't have, like, a wheelchair, so you, you don't have, like, wide turning radiuses, anywhere. I'll get a balcony. Junior suite, in fact. Get you a little extra space without having to get an accessible room. Obviously, there are handicap accessible rooms for you, but I imagine, and again, I'm just assuming those are more better for, for someone who is uh, using a wheelchair. Mike Jameson, thank you for the super chat, brother. Really appreciate that. Um, have ever, uh, somebody asked, have I ever been on a holiday cruise? Melissa Blanchard, yes. Uh, I've done a cruise over July 4th a couple of years. I've done it over Thanksgiving, doing Thanksgiving again this year, and doing New Year's Eve for the first time uh, this year as well. Uh, Sophie, any suggestions for Rhapsody of the Seas? Check out Izumi. It is probably one of my favorite specialty restaurants ever because the venue space is absolutely amazing. Cruise Addicts, what are drone restrictions on a Royal Caribbean's private destinations? You can't use them there. Labadee, Perfect Day, Coco Key, they're not allowed. Raphael, what is the change of the Giovanni's restaurant and explore the upgrade? Good question. They're going to be adding, basically changing the menu, also renovating the actual restaurant space, but we don't have an exact idea of what to expect because we don't, the, none of the ships have had the changeover yet. Brandon, any word in the Oasis of the Seas updates? Yes, we actually posted a video right here on our YouTube channel and over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com with a detailed list of what is changing. David Dorr, thank you for the super chat. David Rice just finished Harmony Cruise. Thanks for what you do. David, you're very welcome. What was your favorite thing about Harmony Cruise? Cruising Q, thank you for being an insider as well. Cool guy, what is the best ship? The ship you happen to be on. Um, Cruise Addicts, thank you for being a Royal Caribbean Blog insider as well. Cheryl, where should we eat lunch on Anthem on our Embarkation Day? The Windjammer. Go to the Windjammer. Nothing wrong with that. Love that place. Uh, Mike James says, Royal Caribbean is still offering drink cards with 10 drinks for a special price on Embarkation Day. It's never offered on Embarkation Day, dude, uh, but they are offered on some sailings, usually about halfway through the sailing, a little bit later, but it really, there's no way to know in advance. Katie Murphy, thank you for the super chat. Wow, you guys are super, super generous today. Thank you, Katie. Uh, without having the internet package, Katie wants to know, how would the family get a hold of me uh, back home? Ah, there is a 1-800 number they can call. It's very expensive. But there is an 800 number. Well, I don't know. I assume it's an 800 number. But it is. Uh, there's a very high cost per minute. But they can call the ship and they can then it's just direct it right to your phone, uh, Katie. Uh, once you're on board the ship, Katie, look in your cruise compass. The phone number will be listed over there. And you can, you know, obviously before you leave, text them or email them the contact information there. Tony Diaz wants to know, is it wise to book a cruise while on a cruise? Good question. The answer is, if you're on the ship, Tony, and you're having a great time and really enjoying it, yeah, dude, it's a great idea. Go to next cruise, book one there. But what you shouldn't do, Tony, is wait. Like, if you know you want to book a cruise right now and you're sitting at home, book it now. Don't wait. Because any incentives you get from booking on board, I'd be concerned that you would they'd be offset by a price increase. You know what I mean? By the time you actually got on board the ship. Oh, Dallas, thank you for the super chat. What are the best activities for teens? There's a teen club, oh, Dallas, on every Royal Caribbean ship. This is a special area just for teens to enjoy special programming just for them. In addition to that, there's a lot of um, teen activities on the ship. As an example, like on some ships, the flow rider will go for teens only mode or, you know, special activities just for them, karaoke just for teens, things of that nature. So there's a lot of great things there. Oh, Dallas, always a pleasure having you here. Uh, Pascal points out that, by the way, for Katie, that phone number for the ship is also listed in your e-docs with all the other cruise information. Thank you very much. Uh, Sophie, why are the pools on the ship so salty? Actually, um, some ships are salty. Some ships are, um, are, uh, uh, so, some ships, sorry, let me try that again. Some, some ship pools are salt water. Some are fresh water with chlorine. It really depends on the class of ships over there. So, uh, Storm Prep Lady, glad to have you back here. Welcome back. Uh, Mike, can you smoke a cigar in the casino? Some people say yes, some people say no. The answer is yes, you can. In the casino? Absolutely. Uh, Prodigy, has BOGO dining package been offered on Anthem of the Seas lately? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, I don't keep track of every single sailing uh, prodigy. Maybe some folks in chat here who have a cruise coming up on Anthem of the Seas can answer that for you. MJ, have you used your Royal Caribbean status on Celebrity? Do you have to be, do you have to notify Celebrity or Royal Caribbean ahead of time? I have not, but yes, you do need to do it ahead of time, MJ. You need to set that up and have them basically link your two accounts, your Captain's Club account on Celebrity with your Crown and Anchor account there. 
Uh, Vivian, can kids who are 10, 13 go to the Thrill Water Park by themselves? Not the 10-year-old. I believe they lowered the age recently uh, to... I'm going to look it up for you right now. I apologize when I'm um, not watching the chat right now. But uh, I'm going to give you the age. The age is... They recently lowered it because it was like 14. So guests need to be at least... All guests under 14 years old must be accompanied by a ticketed guest of age 14 or older to enter. So that's the rule right there. Uh, can you carry and drink? Can you carry and drink your drinks throughout the ship? Catherine Bentley wants to know. Absolutely, yes. You order the drink at any bar, restaurant, wherever you can take it and go. Uh, B Nikes. What ships are allowed on the helipad? Radiance class, Voyager class, and Freedom class. Sophie, why do the kids have to be in the room by one a.m.? Because there's a curfew for there, and if your kids aren't in the room by one a.m., assuming they're not like if they're kids, not like you know you're adults, but it's a curfew. They probably should, it's probably a good idea from a parenting standpoint. They should be in bed. Uh, Lauren, what's your recommendation for a honeymoon cruise? Ooh, there's so many great choices. I mean, honestly, where do you want to go? I mean, you could you could pick a fabulous itinerary as an example. One of my good friends, Michael Poole, just got married, and he's over in uh, Europe enjoying a, a Rome or sorry, an Italy and uh, Greek Isles cruise. That's for the destination, obviously. You could also do a Caribbean cruise. Heck, for my honeymoon, we went on Mariner of the Seas. It was a Western Caribbean cruise. Had a fantastic time. So I think it really depends on what you're looking for. Maybe the latest Royal Caribbean ship. Maybe you're looking for the destination. Maybe a little bit of both. So, uh, Tony, is it wise to book a cruise while on a cruise? I answered this question for you, Tony, already. The answer is, if you're on a ship, you're having a great time, and you decide, okay, you know what? I would love to book another cruise. Yes, you should do that. My, What I'm trying to tell you, though, Tony, is if you're sitting at home right now, and you have a cruise in a couple weeks or a couple months, don't wait. Book it now. Um, <laughs> some of you, am I seeing the same questions over and over again? I mean, I know I am, but I've answered some of these. Like Mike asked, can you smoke a cigar in the casino? Yes, yes, you can, Mike. Yes. Keith, what are the top three Caribbean islands? They're all great, dude. My favorite three, Cozumel, San Juan, Puerto Rico, St. Martin. But of course, I'd be overlooking, of course, Perfect Day, Coco Key, Royal Caribbean's new private island, which is absolutely amazing. Love it. Uh, Dev, Devan, Devanden Top. I'm not saying that right. Any tips for getting specialty dining nights booked on departure? Just go as soon as you can, dude. As soon as you can, on once you're on board the ship, go do yourself a favor, book it, then you'll be good to go. Uh, B Nikes, is support open for a lunch or on a vacation day? Usually, yes. Look at a past cruise compass. We keep an archive of past cruise compasses, cruise compasses at Royal Caribbean Blog.com. Uh, let's see here. Make it blue. What is the most underrated advice for a first-time cruiser on Royal Caribbean? Ooh. Use a travel agent. Uh, it is amazing to me in this day and age people don't use travel agents for cruising. It's not like booking a hotel uh, on land. Using a travel agent is really, I think, very underrated. Uh, how short to departure can you book a cruise? I think you're asking like, how soon before the cruise you can book it. Uh, you need at least, I believe, 48 or 72 hours. I've seen both figures uh, I'm not exactly sure which one, but at least 72 hours at the very least. Uh, Mickey, what if I booked a cruise while on a cruise and I found it much cheaper on another site? What can I do? Well, Mickey, <clears throat> if you booked with, first of all, you should know the price is the same throughout across the board, but <coughs> excuse me, price drops do occur sometimes. If you're living in a country like the U.S., if you're a resident of the U.S., Canada, Australia, not the U.K., you can rebook, assuming you're before final payment date. Uh, what slides does Allure of the Seas have? Nothing yet, Santiago, but they are getting the perfect storm uh, water slides. Very similar to what Harmony of the Seas has. Sophie, how far away should you stay from the port the night before? Honestly, that's a really good question, Sophie, because I think a lot too many people get get hung up on a hotel really close to the port. There is, I'm trying to. Th there is not one port in the United States, and I'm gonna go probably say in the world where there's a hotel close enough you can walk from the hotel to the port. You're gonna take a taxi or a car of some kind. So find a good deal. I would say within an hour of the port is totally cool. Uh, CCK, what is my next cruise? My next cruise, oh, what is next cruise? I heard you can pay $100 and Royal Caribbean will give you $600 on the ship. Yeah, next cruise is the, op is the office on board Royal Caribbean ships that allow you to basically book another cruise. And by doing so, you can qualify for certain uh, benefits, perks for booking on board. Jonathan Harmon, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Very, 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 uh, very, very kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Tyler Show, welcome. Jeanette Castillo, can you take a case of water on the ship the first day of cruise? 
Jeanette, you are allowed to bring up to 12 bottles or cans or whatever of non-alcoholic beverages, including water. Yes. Uh, Brandon Chandler is the, wants to know, is the Royal Up program a good idea to try? Yeah, why not? I mean, just understand, just because there's an opportunity, like you get that email, like, hey, Brandon, you can upgrade your room. Doesn't actually mean there is an available room to upgrade, but nothing wrong with rolling the dice as long as you're okay with the money there. Uh, does Royal Caribbean have changing rooms near the pools? Yes, they do. There's just large restrooms over there. Uh, is it wrong to pick a spouse based on the crown anchor status? I'm sure there's some, uh, I'm sure there's some, uh, love relationship experts out there that will probably tell you, uh, that's a bad idea. Angela Roman! Wow! Thank you for the super chat, Angela. That is very, very kind. You guys have been super, I mean, just a lot of folks showing generosity today. Katie, you know, Dallas and Jonathan and Angela and Unicorn Life, Michael Garner, Mickey, CC, uh, Mike Jameson, David Orr. Uh, look, Mickey with another super chat. Mickey! Oh my goodness! Richard, 1984 with Super Chats. Holy moly, guys. Thank you to Mickey. Thank you to Richard. And thank you again to Angela for the amazing... Uh, generous. Holy moly, another one! Guys, I don't deserve this. I like. I deserve about 34 cents. That's it. Glamp, 63. Thank you for being... Uh, thank you for the Super Chat. And writes, just became an insider. You're doing a great job. Wowie, wow, wow. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you, Glamp. And thank you to everybody. Wow. Mickey with another super chat. Somebody get a hold of Mickey. <laughs> thank you so much, Mickey. Very, very kind of you. Santiago, what is the best thing to do as a teenager on Allure of the Seas? Go sign up for the teen club. You'll meet all your friends there. You'll have a great time. You'll get to be uh, part of all the teen special teens activities and programming on board. You definitely want to do that. Uh, Odal says, you're amazing. I learned so much about cruising for you. Well, Odalis, I am really... That, that, that's... It really means a lot to me, honestly, because, you know, at the end of the day, I always worry I'm just spewing out information and it's going into the ether. So it's always it's always gratifying, quite frankly, to hear that it's actually helpful. So thank you. Uh, Team Club is no charge, baby jugs. Great name. That's right. Complimentary, including Adventure Ocean as well, which is for the younger kids. Uh, Cruising Q, I didn't use a travel agent until I started using MEI Travel, and they have been great. Of course, MEI Travel, our sponsor. But thank you, Mickey, for the very kind words and for supporting our sponsor, Alex Otteson. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, Dallas wants to know, why are cruise fares double the price when you book a loan? Because the industry is based on double occupancy. So if you book a room by yourself because you're cruising alone, then you, you basically you're, you're missing a spot there. And the price structure, the way that cruise lines profit is based on two people there seems to make up the difference. Uh, Mona Boz with the super chat. Thank you, Mona. Excursions in Key West. Uh, do they hop on, hop off trolley? We did that the last time we were in Key West. It was a lot of fun. Very convenient. Baby Jugs with a super chat. And by the way, I just love saying Baby Jugs. Thank you so much, guys. Wow. Jamie Pai... I'm going to get this right. Jamie Pai Chosinski. Pai Chosinski. Jamie Pai Chosinski. First time live. Welcome, Jamie. Glad to have you here. MJ, do you think Rokerman will retire Empress of the Seas and Majesty if Cuba doesn't reopen? It's a good question, dude. I'm not sure. Um, Mona, thank you for another super chat. But again, same answer for excursions to Key West. Uh, the hop-on, hop-off trolley is the way to go there. No question about it. Will they retire? I mean, all ships eventually will be retired. Obviously, with Cuba no longer an option, the purpose, if you will, the primary purpose of Empress and to some extent Majesty is diminished. Um, so I could definitely see it uh, being the case, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how to how to how to describe that. I mean, now they have a bunch of new itineraries going forward, so it looks good in the short term. Baby drugs, right? First time live as well. Always watch the videos. Thank you, uh, Jenny. Why did they close Cuba? Uh, you got to ask the uh, current U.S. administration. It was the president's decision to change that. The cruise lines would have loved to keep going. So there you go. Uh, Jonathan, you really should try Majesty of the Seas. Um, it's a great little ship. Actually, I was on Majesty. I've been on Majesty once. I went on Majesty back in July 2018. We went to, to Cuba, which was, and it was great. Uh, Sarah Baker, best excursion in Roatan. Little French Key is a great beach area. Uh, we also went, last time we were in Roatan, we went to a semi-all-inclusive called, um, uh, called uh, what's it called? Uh, Mayan Princess. Mayan Princess. We have a full review at royalcreamblog.com. Sean and Casey, do you recommend signing up for Crown Anchor Society? Absolutely. You got nothing, you've got nothing. you absolutely nothing to lose. Everything to gain. So, Colin Holmes, thank you for the super chat, Colin. Thanks so much for all the great videos. Looking forward to Oasis on January 26th. Thank you. 
Jenny from the blog wants to know, are you planning another cruise? Of course I am, Jenny. Come on now. I can't go. I can't have nothing to look forward to. I have um, I have a number of cruises booked. My next cruise booked is Oasis of the Seas, November 24th for Thanksgiving. Sophie, if we join Crown and Anchor Society, can you get points uh, from before you were signed up? Yes, absolutely. They can retroactively apply all your points. Kobe Huggins with the super chat. Thank you. Late night options for food on the ship. Uh, yes, you have the win the windjammers up until about nine nine thirty or so. Then you have Cafe Promenade. Depends on the ship we're talking about. Uh, you have either Cafe Promenade, Park Cafe, Cafe Latitudes, and of course room service is open twenty four hours. Let me put it this way: you're not going to go hungry on your ship. Uh, Steve Holt with the super chat. Can you smoke a cigar in the casino? Absolutely, yes, 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 yes. Jared, you were on the November 24th sailing. Well, do, do me a favor, brother. When you see me on board the ship, please say hello. Say, hey, my name is Jared. Watch you on YouTube. I would love to meet you. Uh, JC, you're going to be... Sorry. Oh, you're going to be one of the first to see the upgraded Oasis. Can't wait to hear. I am super excited. To the Rogue, do you work for Royal Caribbean? I do not work for Royal Caribbean. I have no affiliation with Royal Caribbean whatsoever. I also don't work for a travel agency. I'm not a travel agent myself. I just run RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I'm a, I'm a big fan of cruising, just like many of you guys, and so I just like to share as much as I can. Uh, Sophie, what date was I on Majesty? I was on here for, the I believe it was July 4th, 2018. Uh, Richard says, because of Royal Caribbean Blog and numerous videos on YouTube, I finally booked Oasis of the Seas for February 2021. Wanted a nice star class week. Awesome, dude. I am so pumped for you, my friend. You are going to love Oasis of the Seas. It is amazing. Jenny says, I love cruising also. Guys, group hug. Group hug. Come on, get in here. Pascal, so excited to meet Matt in October 2020 on Brilliance of the Seas for the Royal Caribbean Blog group cruise. I can't wait to finally meet you as well. And I want to meet all my friends. That's why we do these group cruises. I know what some of you were thinking. What the heck is a Royal Caribbean Blog group cruise? It is a regular Royal Caribbean cruise in which I invite all of you guys. Yes, even you, Jenny from the Block and JC and Baby Jugs to come sail with me on board a ship. Because after all, what's better than a Royal Caribbean cruise? A Royal Caribbean cruise with friends. Carlos, what is my favorite ship besides Oasis? Harmony of the Seas is my favorite. Number one. Number two is Navigator of the Seas. Jade, have I ever thought about doing a New Zealand cruise out of Australia? All the time, Jade. I just don't want to fly for 24 hours. I hate flying. <laughs> and, 20, and flying all the way to Australia is not my idea of fun. So as soon as they invent like transporters from Star Trek, I will totally go to Australia in a heartbeat. Uh, JC, love Royal Caribbean. We did a Norwegian cruise a few years ago. I felt like we were cheating the whole time. <gasps> JC, say it ain't so. Dawn, just checked in for the Freedom Group Cruise. Can't wait. Dummy Face Saga, can we use WoW bands by the pool or do you have to go to the bar? Uh, both. They can just take your WoW band. No question about it. Uh, Anna, are you planning on going on a holiday cruise? Yes, uh, we have uh, my next two cruises actually are both over holidays. Uh, Oasis is over Thanksgiving and uh, Freedom of the Seas is over New Year's Eve. Uh, Naya wants to know, are the promenade view rooms loud? Can you hear the noise below? It's not like deadly death silent, like you won't hear a thing, but a lot of the loud activities are limited earlier in the day. Um, so as long, and you're not sleeping by the window anyway, I mean, you're, there's a little bit of distance. I think you'll be fine. Unless you're like the lightest sleeper on earth, you should have no problems there. Roz, what are my two, why are those two ships your favorites? Good question, Roz. Harmony is my favorite because it is the Oasis class with the best of the quantum class. I mean, it's just a, it's a it, to me, it's a great melding of both. And Navigator is a Voyager class ship, obviously, but I just love, love the upgrades they've done to that ship, so. Mickey writes, I want to go on a group cruise. Well, Mickey, go over to royalcaribbeanblog.com slash events and sign up. We'd love to have you there. Um, hang on a second. I'm just getting rid of... Just getting rid of uh, some trolls in there. Uh, let's see here. Monty Boydson, thank you for the super chat. Symphony of the Seas, January 2020. You're going to love, love, love that ship. Have I ever done a transatlantic day? No, I have not. Sean wants to know, Are there main is the main dining room open for lunch on the first day we want to be served by a waiter? No. So if you want lunch served by a waiter, you'd have to, on embarkation day, you'd have to go to a specialty restaurant. Um, the lun Lunch is open in the main dining room on sea days. And since you're in port, embarkation day doesn't count. Uh, Baby Jerk, I'm spending about $6,000 on this Freedom Cruise, so it might be a while before I go on another one. Well, save your pennies uh, all the same. Gene wants to know, what's my favorite excursion so far? Oh, man. Go to Alaska. 
Uh, doing the Humvee tour was a lot of fun over there. How windy is it during winter, Santiago? Uh, it's like asking how sunny is it in the summertime. Uh, it depends. <laughs> uh, Susan, what's the link to the travel agent? So, Susan, go to royalcarmenblog.com. You will see a giant yellow form. Fill out that form. They'll contact you. And thank you in advance. Uh, Christopher wants to know, any experience with grandeur of this? I have not been on grandeur yet, uh, but I've heard wonderful things. Grandeur has a great following in the area. So, uh, Danielle wants to know, have you ever been to Pearl Island? I have not. All right, guys, I got time for like another one or two questions, and then I got to head on out of here. But I really appreciate everybody hanging out with us here. Uh, Tommy wants to know, can you use wow bands to get on and off the chip? No, that is actually one of the few things you cannot use the wow bands for. You need your CPAS card. What is my favorite restaurant? Sabor, love Sabor, and Izumi, love Izumi. Either one, I can be happy just eating at those two restaurants. Uh, Baby Jake says, no, stay forever in chat. Can you imagine? It's like 3 a.m. This chat's going on for like six hours. Uh, Baby Jugs wants to know what's my favorite entree in the main dining room. Uh... Oh, oh, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Oh my goodness, uh, let's hide user on this channel, thank you. Michael Garner, uh, thank you for the super chat. Would, you, would it be amazing if Don and Matt did a cruise? I'm not sure who Don is, but sure. I'm always down for more meeting more friends, especially if it means more cruising. Down for that. Uh, Debbie Face, a anyone here going on Symphony this weekend? Unfortunately, not me. Uh, MJ, thanks Matt from Istanbul. Didn't realize you were from there, welcome. Uh, JP Travel Vlog, when is my group cruise? We have two group cruises coming up. Freedom of the Seas in December uh, over New Year's Eve. And then Brilliance of the Seas, October 2020. Scott, what type of room do I go in the most? Probably a balcony. I think almost certainly a balcony. Sydney wants to know, have I been on Empress of the Seas? Going to Belize, have you been there? Is it safe? I have not been on Empress yet. And I have been to Belize a couple times. It's pretty safe if you book with a, obviously a shore excursion ahead of time. And especially one rep a reputable one at, at, at that. Um, I think it'll be okay. So, um, Odell says, I want to know if you can bring non-alcoholic drinks from the port if 12 cans have finished. Nah, it's kind of a great, technically the answer is no. Um, you may get lucky, Odell, but I wouldn't plan on it. The answer to your question is, the official answer to your question is no, Odell, but you might get like, you know, you put it in your bag, don't say, don't say anything about it. You never know. Vitamin water writes, Anthem. I don't know what that question means, but it's awesome. You'll love Anthem of the Seas. So, all right, guys, I got to run. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us here. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, be sure to check out royalcaribbeanblog.com. And, of course, there's plenty more Royal Caribbean fun news information. Fun. I said fun. Plenty more Royal Caribbean information waiting for you at royalcaribbeanblog.com. I'm going to be working on some couple new videos for you guys this week, so check that out. Until then, have a great rest of your week, guys. Enjoy. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Good night, everybody.